The second common approximation used to manipulate and analyze rate law expressions for reaction mechanisms is called the steady state approximation. Again, consider the following reaction scheme. Some reactant A is in equilibrium with an intermediate I, which then decays to product P. The rate law expression for the intermediate can be expressed as the following. The rate of change of the intermediate with respect to time is equal to Kf times the concentration of A minus Kr plus Kp times the concentration of I. The additive term Kf times the concentration of A represents the production of the intermediate, while Kr plus Kp times the concentration of I represents the consumption of the intermediate. If Kf is much less than Kr plus Kp, then the intermediate is consumed much faster than it is produced. Typically, very little of the intermediate will exist in the reaction vessel. As a result, the rate of change of the intermediate will also be very small. Under these conditions, we can simply approximate the rate of change of the intermediate with respect to time to be equal to zero in order to simplify manipulating and analyzing rate law expressions. All right, so then let's apply this, this second approximation, this, the steady state approximation, to our DNA example, where again we have this, this reaction mechanism where we start with this supercoiled DNA. It then turns into open circle DNA, which then eventually becomes linear DNA. And in this case, we want to predict the concentrations of all three for all time. And so in this case, we want to find the integrated rate law expressions. Um, and again, we're still starting with the, the assumption that we only start with supercoiled DNA. And that what we know about this reaction is that the second rate constant, so this Kf2, is much, much, much bigger than the first rate constant, Kf1. And so the question is simply asking us, apply the steady state approximation to this reaction to get the integrated rate law expressions for, for all three components under these conditions. So let's start by writing down everything that we know about the reaction. And so that at first will be, let's write the rate law expressions. So I've got the rate of change of the supercoiled DNA with respect to time is equal to its consumption, which is minus Kf1 times the concentration of the supercoiled DNA. I have the rate of change of the open circle DNA. So that's D concentration of OC by DT. And that's equal to its production, which is just Kf1 times the concentration of supercoiled DNA minus its consumption. So minus Kf2 times the concentration of open circle DNA. I have my third rate law expression. So my rate of change of my concentration of my linear DNA, so dL by dt, and that's equal to its production, Kf2 times the concentration of the open circle DNA. And then finally I have my mole balance equation where because I start with only supercoiled DNA, then that initial amount of supercoiled DNA is equal to the concentration of all three constituents, so the supercoiled DNA plus the concentration of open circle DNA plus the concentration of linear DNA. And so here, where I can apply the steady state approximation, and that's basically this fact that I've got these two rate constants where one is much, much, much larger than the other, then what that tells me is that my concentration, or the rate of change of my concentration of my open circle DNA, well, that's going to be equal to zero. And that's something you can see based on this plot, where because the amount of open circle DNA as soon as it gets created, it's immediately consumed, and that's just governed by the fact that these two rate constants are, are so different, where the consumption of the open circle DNA happens much faster. Then that means then there's not very much of the open circle DNA that ever gets produced. And for long times t, this value ends up being, or this line is pretty flat. And that's the justification to be able to write, well, let's just approximate it as being equal to zero. And so it's through this approximation that then we're going to be able to solve this, this expression much, much, much more quickly than we did before when we had to solve for everything explicitly. And so our strategy for this is simply going to be that we're going to solve for, first, our supercoiled DNA, the integrated rate law expression, um, based on this first equation that we have here, the rate law expression for the supercoiled DNA. And once we know that, then we can just take that and substitute that into the second expression 
where now I can solve explicitly for my concentration of open circle DNA without having to do any calculus. And then as soon as I know that, I can take this concentration of open circle DNA, plug it into this third rate law expression, evaluate the integral, and then determine what is my concentration of the linear DNA. So let's put this strategy into practice. So my first step is again just to evaluate the rate law expression for the supercoiled DNA. So the rate of change of the supercoiled DNA with respect to time is equal to the negative times the first rate constant times the concentration of supercoiled DNA. I divide both sides by the concentration of supercoiled DNA. So my left hand side I get D supercoiled DNA divided by the concentration of supercoiled DNA. And I multiply both sides by DT. So my right hand side I get minus KF1 times DT. I then on my right hand side my integral goes between 0 and T. And on my left hand side it goes from my initial conditions which is my, my initial amount of supercoiled DNA, and my upper bound is just my concentration of supercoiled DNA at time t. I evaluate this integral. I get the natural logarithm of the concentration of supercoiled DNA evaluated between the initial amount of supercoiled DNA and the supercoiled DNA at any time t. On my right-hand side, I get that first rate constant, the negative of it, times t, evaluated between 0 and t. I apply my fundamental theorem of calculus, natural logarithm of the concentration of supercoiled DNA minus the natural logarithm of the initial concentration of supercoiled DNA, and that's equal to minus KF1 times T minus zero. I'm then going to join together these natural logarithm terms, so I get the natural logarithm of the concentration of supercoiled DNA divided by the concentration initially of the supercoiled DNA, and on my right hand side I have minus KF1 times T. I then take the exponent of both sides, so I get my concentration of supercoiled DNA divided by the initial concentration of supercoiled DNA, and that's equal to E raised to the power of negative KF1 times T. And then finally, explicitly solving for my concentration of supercoiled DNA leaves me with the initial concentration of supercoiled DNA times E raised to the power of negative KF1 times T. Continuing with my strategy that I outlined before, I'm now going to look at the integrated rate law expression of the second of the open circle DNA where I've applied the steady state approximation. And so what that looks like is I've got KF1 times the concentration of supercoiled DNA and that's going to be subtracting from that I have my second rate constant times the concentration of my open circle DNA and that's equal to zero. And again the steady state approximation is the fact that I'm setting this, this differential of the open circle DNA to be equal to zero. And so then I can rearrange and I can solve for the concentration of open circle DNA, which means that I have it equal to KF1 times the concentration of supercoiled DNA divided by KF2. And then since I have an expression for my supercoiled DNA, then I can essentially take that expression and then just substitute that right into this expression, which means that my concentration of open circle DNA is equal to KF1 over KF2 times my initial concentration of supercoiled DNA times E raised to the power of negative KF1 times T. And now since I have this expression for open circle DNA, I can now plug that into my rate law expression for my linear DNA. So my rate of change of my linear DNA with respect to time was equal to the second rate constant times my concentration of open circle DNA. And since I have an expression for my concentration of open circle DNA, I can just plug that in explicitly. So my rate of change of my linear DNA with respect to time, well that's equal to KF2 times KF1 divided by KF2 times the concentration of supercoiled DNA initially times E raised to the power of negative KF1 times T. I'm going to make two simplifications. The first one is that I'm just going to just cross off these KF2 terms since I have one on top and one on the bottom. But the second one I'm going to make is I'm going to multiply both sides by dt. So on my left hand side I'm simply left with my, my d concentration of linear DNA and that's equal to KF1, the concentration of supercoiled DNA initially, and then e raised to the power of negative KF1 times t dt. And then I'm going to integrate both sides, where on my left-hand side I'm going to integrate from 0 to the concentration of L, 
and again it's because I have no linear DNA to start. And on my right hand side I'm going to go from 0 to t. And so what that leaves me with on my left hand side is that I have my concentration of L evaluated between 0 and the concentration of L. And on my right hand side well, I have KF1 and concentration, or initial concentration of supercoiled DNA. Both those are constants, so they're not going to do anything in this integral. And so really, I've only got this exponential term. And the integral, integral of E raised to the power of negative some constant times T with relation to T means that I'm going to have KF1 times the concentration of supercoiled DNA initially. And then that integral is then going to be 1 over negative kf1 times e raised to the power of negative kf1 times t. And that's going to be evaluated between 0 and t. On my left hand side, if I evaluate my fundamental theorem of calculus, I have my concentration of L minus 0. Over here on my right hand side, I can cross off my kf1 terms. I still have this minus sign in the denominator, so I have to take that into account when I evaluate my fundamental theorem of calculus. But that just means I have my concentration of supercoiled DNA initially, and then I'm going to apply my fundamental theorem of calculus. And so what that means is that I'm going to have negative e raised to the power of negative kf1 times t. And then since I have a minus, then it's minus minus, which gives me plus e raised to the power of 0, which ultimately means that I'm going to make that equal to 1. And so my final step here is that I can write my concentration of my linear DNA and that's equal to the initial concentration of supercoiled DNA times 1 minus e raised to the power of negative kf1 times t.